we kind of like pets doesn't have the same ring. They've got a lovely <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. love them. Well, we are support heavy, aren't we? We just yeah. invest. We front end investment in support all the time. So we always make sure there's that marriage, there's that connection. And I think you get that within the first two meetings. You know full well they're we love pets. It's yeah. all about the data. Facts don't lie. And yeah, people We've just, just overlook that. And so I'm here with Joe and Ryan from We Love Pets. Um, thanks for joining me, guys. So tell me about We Love Pets and the, the franchise. Well, it all started, yeah, when I was, uh, I guess, going back to when I was a little girl and I used to dog nap dogs and, uh, because I always wanted pets, always loved them. Parents never let me have one, so I always loved animals. Um, started working in the corporate world after going to uni, realised I didn't really want to work for anyone. Love working with people, but not, you know, for them necessarily. So I combined the two passions that we love pets up um, and we're just celebrating our 15th anniversary aren't we yeah we love pets so yeah amazing yeah. i know and how did you um so once you set the business up what what how did you find out about franchising and what kind of drove you to franchise the business because i set it up in uh, 2008 you know in the middle of the recession but it was so busy i just grew and grew and grew and expanded um, i had to get a team within about seven days of launching the business wow um, and just looked at the best ways to expand your business and franchising just came up every time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. now, 15 years on, how does the business look? How many franchisees do you have? Uh, how much? Bloody amazing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we, I joined in 2015, 16. Uh, I was helping Joe train the franchisees. Um, we had six, I think six branches at that point. Um, I joined full time 2016. We've now got 107 franchisees. Well, with 186 locations, yeah. so it's good. I mean, Jo done a marvellous job of setting it up. You know, I'll give her all the credit for that. She done a fantastic job, and I just made it perfect. <laughs> I, I thought there was a book coming, yeah. It was good. <laughs> yeah. It was like, you know, when our good meets average, and then ex excellent comes And then Ryan sweeped like in me. with his cape on. Oh, but no, yeah. Ryan's brilliant, because he's, <laughs> he's passionate about the brand, and he gets people, and it's all about relationships and franchising. And that's what helps us sell well, so yeah. many, doesn't it? I've worked yeah. in pet care. Um, my podcast with Ryan, actually, from Teslom, it was all about where I started. And not, what's funny about it is when Jo was setting up, whilst she was setting up her business, I was already in the pet care sector doing very different things. I then became a teacher in pet care, then started teaching Jo's franchisees, then become managing yeah. director a year later. So it's always been that path that we sort of finally yeah. collided. You guys are as much of an expert as you can be in the pet sector in yeah. terms of like the roles you've had and, and where you've worked etc yeah. So. Well, yeah yeah absolutely yeah i think it's just made for it aren't yeah we? and we became a family didn't we through franchising um three we love pets and now our, our values in the business are family fun and animal welfare and our network is like our extended family yeah that's amazing it's great yeah so what um looking a bit at the actual business of what a franchisee does like what are the core services that a franchisee would offer if they if they bought the franchise well, they offer, I always say with We Love Pets, any sort of pet care is provided uh, so long as it doesn't or isn't detrimental to welfare. So any pet care at all. We don't do large doggy daycare facilities. You know, we promote positive welfare, so we wouldn't dream of doing that. We don't pack walk either, so we don't walk loads of dogs that are sat in a van all day long. Everything that you require for your pets surrounding welfare will cover. So there are so many services they operate. I think We Love Pets are slightly different because although the franchisees are focused solely around the welfare, we coach them to be business owners. They don't pay us 12995 plus fat to become a dog walker. That's ridiculous. And I think we see a lot of that. You're buying a franchise to become a dog walker. No, at We Love Pets, you buy a franchise to become a business owner and mm. succeed. Yeah. And I think that's why we're hitting the numbers we do because we give them every single tool they require to be successful. Yeah, and that's amazing. So, do you find most people that um, come into the network, they they what are the kind of key attributes? Like, they clearly they have a passion for pets. They love pets. Yeah, yeah. We kind of like pets. Doesn't have the same ring. They've got a lovely <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I also love them. But, but ultimately, yeah, that's for and me. Yeah, for me, it's definitely that, isn't it? Number one, and for me, it's mindset. They've got to have the right mindset. Positive. Positive. And accepting of what we're saying, because we've been doing it for so long, and all the other franchisees have, and they've tried and tested everything made mistakes and now we've got this really successful model that we know works yeah so focus on delivering that you know and having that positive mindset with it too 
So if someone loves pets, has a positive mindset, wants to build a business, they don't need wants any... Wants to earn lots of money, wants to work with pets and have a team of people. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good, like, good work-life balance. And to be honest, Adam, like, you don't need to come on board with a positive mindset because we know employment depletes people's mentality and mindset anyway. In that suppressive culture of employment, most people that have come are damaged in that way anyway. Everything, the glass is half empty. We help them develop and deliver in a positive way, even if they come slightly negative. So you've just got to be able to, I suppose there's can, can'ts and won'ts. If you're a won't, don't pick up the phone because yeah. you're not going to come join We Love Pets. If you're yeah. a can, come on in and we'll train you. And if you're a can, let's get going. Yeah. yeah. And what, what does a typical day look like for a franchisee? I always think this is a good question to ask, because I think someone looking to invest in the franchise, like, how, what is a typical day of a We Love Pets franchisee? Put the kettle on. Get Sounds a good start. Kids ready for yeah, school. Kids ready for school, look after their own pets, you know, and then look at the schedules, look at the team. They've all got a team of professionals that work for them. Make sure they're all set up, and then go out and meet up with your team. Yeah. Do the odd dog walk if you want to do your dog walking still. It's all about the team, isn't it? So meet, taking them a coffee on a rainy day when they're walking the dogs, checking in, giving them training, you know, running uh, webinars or training sessions in the house, and recruiting because our demand just outstrips supply. So it's recruit, recruit, recruit all the time. And we look after our staff. You know, we encourage our franchisees to employ people. None of this artificial self-employment they employ a team of people yeah we hear a lot of other companies just referring to them as helpers and things like that but that's just ridiculous we encourage that sort of family ethos they're your team they're your family because it breeds good culture yeah yeah, yeah exactly so i know you guys are really proud of the support that you offer from head office for franchisees like t- tell me a bit more about that well we are support heavy aren't we we just yeah. invest we front end investment in support all the time because you have to have that support infrastructure there to help the franchisees and deliver the culture we can't just say it. we have to live and breathe it ourselves don't we? yeah and i would it's say with 107 franchisees although we are support heavy i wouldn't say we're heavy in support in a sense of we just get them for getting them in sake they're all experts in their field we've got 11 full-time staff at head office um you know that's something good to boast about and they're all experts in their field. So yeah. franchisees can focus and concentrate on their business whilst we're doing everything else. Yeah. You know, it's win-win for them. So we've got a digital marketer at head office, Darren, he's our tech expert. Um, yeah, he's brilliant. So he leads in all the marketing. And we are now building our own system and app. It's brilliant. It's going to use AI and machine learning. It's just going to be fabulous, isn't it? It will be. Well, it's and the it's, first. It's going to shave off at least 20, 30 hours of franchisees' admin time in the week. Wow freeing them up to recruit and grow and earn more money and look after more dogs in their area so it's win-win and by having all that in-house it's just brilliant isn't it yeah so we can leave in the top and i think like speaking to you guys like the thing that definitely comes across is that people can have a passion for pets but they can build a serious business which um which you guys are kind of training giving the support to do that um Give me an idea of the kind of business people can build. I think there probably is a perception sometimes when people look at the, the pet care franchise sector that you know someone's going to buy a franchise and look after pets themselves. And, and it's and a life, yeah. Yeah, but life like, give me an idea of the scale of business that I people suppose, can build. I suppose, I mean, I can use as an example, and it's not always the one, but if you look at t- if you look at figures itself, I mean, we've recently we've got two lovely ladies just started with us sisters, and they hit four thousand nine hundred pound turnover in month four. Wow. And they've got a team of seven people. You know, our largest franchisee, they're turning over in and around 25 to 28,000, facilitating thousands of customers. That's per month. Um, and a lot of our, we've had six branches go back registered this year, and two of those are only in 18 months. Yeah. So it is a serious, it's a growing, booming industry, and you've got a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon thinking they can rock it because they know business. You have to know the pet care sector, and that's key. And you have to know business, it goes hand in hand, doesn't it? With well, this? yeah, and I think, I suppose yeah. that's where we come from. Jo's, you know, got her experience and I've got mine and we blend the two together. You can't really get a... Different skill set, yeah. yeah. No, it's brilliant, but we're both passionate. Yeah, yeah. Well, that definitely comes across, so... Yeah. Good. So if someone is interested in the franchise, they've got a passion, they love pets, I should say, they love pets. <laughs> what, what's better. the best next step to get in contact? Just reach out and get in touch. Um, we're not that large corporate that's not that's losing the family feel. You're going to get through to myself. 
Um, so go onto our website, um, which you can see here. No. Um, <laughs> can you put it there? You are, I don't know. But, yeah, go on the website, send an email, fill out a form, or just get in touch, call the number on there, and we'll have a chat and we'll go through it we always have we love pets we always make sure that the hand fits the glove as much as the glove fits the hand you might really want to join we love pets but it's not quite right not that they're not good enough it's just not right yeah and we are very honest and open and we will say we've said 11 times this year we're sorry but it's not quite right because we want what's right for the person you know they've already been through a rough time possibly why are we going to make it worse so we always make sure there's that marriage there's that connection and I think you get that within the first two meetings. You know full well they're We Love Petsy. Because it is a long-term relationship. It's something we do differently as well. Is when Ryan's talking to people um, that thinking about buying a franchise from us. It's about any one of our franchisees. We have 107 people. We don't people. them. Yeah. You can like, ring who you yeah. want. We don't, we don't sort of suggest, oh, we'll take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah. No, no, ring all 107. And if there's anyone that's unhappy, I would be gobsmacked. That's amazing. Well, that, that's a massive testament to the yeah. strength ring of the network. All. Yeah, you know. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and I think that helps. And we constantly improve and we're constantly striving to keep our franchisees performing and successful and happy. Yeah. 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 So it's great. It enables us that transparency, doesn't it? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So just talking a bit about marketing, marketing at uh, Wheel of Pets. I suppose we start with franchise recruitment. How are you guys finding the franchise recruitment landscape so far in 2023? Uh, record year. Better um, than ever. We've, we've, launched, we've launched 12, we've sold 17. Um, we're launching those a little bit later. That's of so first, far, so yeah, so three that's months. In, in three months. Wow. We turned 11 down um, and did advise them to another couple of pet care franchises. They were more suited for them, not We Love Pets. Um, so yeah, we're we're rocking, we are rocking. You know, we get on average eighty to ninety inquiries per week. Wow. Um, we do deal with them individually, so it does take a little while now. We've we've sadly lost that agility to get in touch immediately, yeah. which is frustrating. But it means I still don't have a commission sales team, and that's key for us. We don't want that. Yeah. We don't want people sort of bringing people into the network because of the commission. So yeah, so we're doing it. We're doing as much as we can. You guys have helped us a lot with that. So um, yeah, yeah, marketing well. You did, and we're still um, implementing stuff. You guys advised us two years ago when we yeah. came to you. Yeah, I remember. I remember you, you guys are always at the at the, at the workshop. Amazing. I loved yeah. it. Franchise fest. Yeah, when's I loved that it. yeah, I know. Yeah. We're, we are looking to bring it back. I've heard it's coming back. Yeah, well, we, we are going to sign the whole team up. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got a streaker now coming on. Yeah, so oh he's going to sit on us. Unbelievable. Um, so, ni- ninety leads a week is that—that's unusual in franchising, I think, here in the UK to be generating that level of inquiry. What? What are you doing? Like, where are those you know, leads coming from? Can I just say what I think it is? It's because our culture comes across, and it's taken years and years and years to get to that. I think everything we do, social, um, you know, Google Ads, whatever we do, exhibitions, it's all about us as people and relationships, yep. and you just can't get that overnight. No. Um, and it comes across in everything. And I think, yeah, yeah you're right there. I think 86 of those are competitors, but no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few. Uh, but no, like Joe says, it's all about culture and it's all about passion. Unless you can take that from myself and wife, okay, founder and managing director, you're going you're gonna to struggle. You need to have that family feel in the pet care sector. And it and has to be real. It. Yeah. it has to be transparent. Yeah. How, how do you actually get that across in the marketing, though? So, you know, someone sees your ad for the first time or they're, they're looking at different franchise opportunities. How do you... Because I agree, your culture is fantastic, but how do you get that across in... Advocacy within rank. So, advocacy in-house. All our franchisees, we have 107, all have staff. So we've got over a thousand people that wear this brand with pride. They're going to spread the word, yeah. and I think that's probably the most important. And we thing. live and breathe it every day. So we don't just say to franchisees, "Take all your team out for coffees and you know that kind of thing." We do it with our team at head office. So yeah, we make yeah. them jump in a lake a few weeks ago and do pilates, and then we're doing karate next week. And yeah, we're just doing loads of stuff with our guys that we expect franchisees to do with their team. Yeah, that's um, amazing. And then we capture that. Yeah. So. You- as far as the actual kind of marketing activity you've got running for franchise recruitment at the moment, like, are you, is it social ads? Is it, do you do anything in like people, so advertising with people looking at franchise shows? Darren, for, the first, for the first time, I asked Darren to turn off all advertising three months, two months ago, for the first time ever. So it's like organic. We, yeah. we wow. don't have any, any Google ads now. 
a lot of it, Adam, it comes from you say about the workshops we spent with you. A lot of what you spoke about that you have to be agile and change. But all those years ago, when we were at workshops and stuff, the advice you gave us, we sort of tweaked it with time, and it just continues. But to it's work. invaluable. Yeah, we still it's remember just it working. now. Yeah. So I think that's the most important thing. If you know nothing about franchising, go to people that do know or have people in house that know. Yeah. Don't try and do it, it yourself. Both. Yeah. Have a have a mix of both. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're never going to tick all the boxes in house, are you? No. So yeah, you have to go to the people that are. Well, I think I think you guys prove that if you've got a really good model, really happy franchisees, your franchisees yes. got really happy staff and customers, then that filters up for promoting the franchise. Like it to, does, yeah, 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 exactly, it does, yeah. yeah. Cool. So just a bit about marketing with, in terms of how you market as a business. Like, how do you, how do you see the relationship between what a franchisee does? What's their role in marketing their business, and what's your role as the franchisor? I think we say to them, local, 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 so keep it local, you know, brand up in the area, look after your staff and customers really well, um, and then the reputation builds. We take care of all the digital national stuff. All the social, yeah. all their social, all the national, yeah. all the brand awareness we focus on, and we're allowing them to be humans, okay, yeah, yeah. in a world of humans. And build relationships with the pets, their team, and their customers. Yeah, that's amazing. So I don't think there's many franchise brands that would manage all digital in-house, but and very often, probably the people you're recruiting, that's not their skill set to go and create a no. Facebook ad, etc. No. Um, no. So you, you ma- do they they fund the advertising spend and you manage the campaigns? Is that how that works? Um, to a degree, we don't. We, I mean, it's within their franchise fee. Um, we see it as you support, develop, and grow them. You have a franchise fee coming back in. And you just reinvest their money continuously, yeah. and it serves us well. It's a lot of times you see grabby, grabby, grabby. When you try and grab, you know, the last apple from the tree, if it kills the tree, what's the point? Leave it for ten more to grow, and that's what we're doing. We're developing our 107 franchisees to be profitable and sustainable, rather than starving them. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. And also, you just you must create so much data. So like you, oh, yeah. I think that. that Within the pet care sector, we have so much. Yeah, and I think this is a weakness of a lot of franchisors who don't have a control over the mar- local marketing because actually, how do you know what works nationally yeah. if you don't know what's working in certain locations? It's yeah. all about the data. Facts don't lie. And yeah, people just, just overlook that and it's the most important thing. We've just yeah. recruited for the first time a full-time analytical, um, I suppose, what's Yeah, he's, he's, he's a data team, specialist. Yeah. He's just come from a uh, bank, well-known, reputable bank and that is his job strategy around data so there aren't many pet care franchise companies employing someone full-time and he at was that an level. intelligence officer yeah, in the military, intelligence officer in the military. Really? but we've got him to just look at our data to speak to us and enable us to make positive decisions for the franchisees yeah, yeah. amazing because yeah we love data but not a lot of people can do that in-house we're lucky we found that talent within our team so that's why it's best to outsource it to the experts like you guys have you seen have you seen how big Ryan Armitage is from Tesla? He's walking around. I'm getting quite intimidated. Yeah, well, he's he's next, we've taken his count. He's, he's, he's next on the show. Ryan. In fact, he was meant yeah, to he was meant to start four minutes ago. So he's probably uh, we might have to go. Yeah. Oh, gonna... One last question before you go. So it's early in the show. I know you've probably only got here a chance to have a full work round. It looks pretty busy. What's your impression so far? Good coffee. Yeah, no, no I like good. it. It's good. I spoke to a few people that I know already. We're speaking to F and B pillars from the Middle East because we're looking at going to Dubai, so we've just gone over to meet with them again, have a chat. Um, Looking yeah, forward good. to lots of talks as well. We've got a whole schedule lined up now to listen to people, so it's great just to come here and learn from others. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. All right then, love. Oh, I wanted to go on about how I want to buy a Clip & Climb franchise, but yeah. never mind. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Mate. Thank you. <laughs>